Good morning. This is Faith in Our Hometown, brought to you as a community service and sponsored by Mercy Hospital Joplin. And now, here is your host, Father Jay Friedel. Good morning, everyone, and thanks for joining us for another Sunday morning at Faith in Our Hometown. Hope your Sunday morning has been pleasant so far, whether it's early or a little bit later. Uh, but we thank you for joining us once again for a little bit of a conversation uh, about life here in the greater Joplin area and our communities that surround us in our viewing area. My guest this morning is going to be one of uh, my colleagues from the university, Dr. Andre uh, Dr. Andrea Cullors. And she's going to be talking to us about a new program that they started at Missouri Southern uh, because they became very much aware that some of the students uh, out there were kind of falling through the cracks in terms of food security and how they were going to be able to take care of themselves. So they've started uh, the Lion Co-op and we're going to talk a little bit about that this morning and uh, just talk about the reality of some of our students, uh, some of our uh, international students, some of our regular students uh, you know, are here from the area and some of the pressures that they have and how the university community has kind of reached out to try to help uh, to meet some of those needs. So we're going to be right back after this Mercy Minute. Grab a cup of coffee or whatever you'd like to join, uh, drink while you're joining us this morning and come back. We're going to be right back after this Mercy Minute. The whole purpose of screening uh, is to catch people who have a significant smoking history early enough where we can do something about it and potentially improve the duration of life. The minimum recommendation for screening is 30 pack years. So usually people who've smoked more than 30 pack years are the ones that we're screening. If we start screening yearly with low dose CT scans, we can reduce the risk of death from lung cancer by 20 to 25%. Stage one, two, and three cancers potentially can be cured. When it becomes stage four, the possibility of a cure falls significantly. Well, again, thanks for joining us for another Sunday morning here in Faith, at Faith in Our Hometown. My guest this morning, Dr. Andrea Cullors, mm -hmm. uh, who's actually in the kinesiology mm -hmm. department uh, at Missouri Southern. Uh, and uh, so, Andrea, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, and then let's talk a little bit about uh, how the co-op came to be. Okay. I am in my sixth year I'm teaching at Missouri Southern. I'm an associate professor in... Um, the kinesiology department. So what is kinesiology it for is, all those people out there? It is the study of movement and actually my background is in nutrition so I teach several nutrition classes and that's somewhat where I began noticing um, food insecurity. I have my students keep an online journal and it was surprising to me how often they would mention being food insecure that they weren't able to buy healthy food, they didn't know um, when they would be able to buy more food at the grocery store and that they were just concerned about the availability of food. Um, and I was speaking to some other colleagues, Renee White in the social work department and Dr. Megan Bever in history, and they both had noticed um, those things happening with their students. Bringing, Dr. Bever was bringing um, granola bars during finals to her students because mm, she, yeah. she knew they were hungry. Um, so we were doing some surveys um, as part of our lifetime wellness class and we added um, a few questions about food insecurity and it came back that about 25 to 30 percent of our students in our lifetime wellness class, which is primarily freshmen, freshmen and sophomore, um, were food insecure at some point in the past 12 months. Um, yeah. And so that so, really made us concerned. Oh yeah, and I and I'm and I'm, I'm thrilled that you know you found a way of trying to reach some of that. Mm -hmm. So say a little bit. We have done a few shows on food insecurity mm -hmm. here in the area because mm -hmm. this is an area that 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 uh, that really does affect our our, our viewing area in, mm -hmm. a, in a very large large way. Mm -hmm. uh, so we talked about that, but let's give a little bit of a definition to our mm -hmm. our viewers who mm -hmm. don't think about using terms like food insecurity. Right, right. So um, it's really you at some point you don't know if you'll have enough money to buy food. Um, you're concerned that you may not have enough money to buy the food that you need. Um, it may be eating less than you need to feed your children, to feed other family members. A lot of times in older adults we find that they forgo um, buying medication or they forgo food to buy medication. Okay. Um, it's that it's that making a choice between do I pay the rent, do I buy gasoline, or do I buy food? So it's those choices. Um, and, and so that's really food insecurity. And what we also find is sometimes we have a, a large prevalence of obesity and overweight in our area. But, mm -hmm. And so people don't think that the two can go together. How can you be hungry but then be overweight? Well, 
there's a lot of research that shows that that food insecurity and that hunger is actually what can lead to overweight and obesity. And so right, because folks are not eating nutritionally. Mm -hmm. They're doing, they're eating all kinds of cheap junk mm -hmm. instead of eating the mm -hmm. things that would really be better mm -hmm. for their systems, mm -hmm. their bodies, and everything right. else. Right. So yeah, their their body's hungry. Yeah. Um, and so they're yeah. So it really is. It really is interesting. Um, and so in. Over the summer, um, Dr. Bever and White and I got together and decided, okay, let's let's see what we can do to help these students. And we um, brought a, a group together from Missouri Southern and really got an amazing amount of support. We didn't know what would happen. Um, and so they found a space for us. It, it is um, in the FEMA shelter. It's now called the Residential Life Emergency Shelter. And there was a, a space in there they initially had thought they would make into a convenience store and it, it didn't happen. And right. so we got the space and we had our official ribbon cutting in November. Um, uh, around November 15th and um, we've been open since then and it's really been an amazing experience. The support from the community, um, from the university has really been outstanding. Yeah, so so what does the co-op do? I mean, so what, mm -hmm. what how does this work? If a, if a student winds up just needing food, they wander in, how does, yeah. does it all work? Basically, so anyone affiliated with Missouri Southern, so if they're a student, a staff member, faculty, we also have the Lion Cub Academy, which is a child care center. If they're mm -hmm. a family affiliated with that, they come to the co-op, we have a card swipe, so they swipe their card to just show that they're part of the Lion family, and they basically can take what they want. We give them a grocery bag or two, and we have food, um, non-perishable non food items. We have a personal hygiene um, section. We have some cleaning supplies, laundry detergent, those types of things. For the winter, we've been giving out crock pots um, for a lot of the students that live in a dorm without any cooking facilities. Um, so it's really open to anyone affiliated with Missouri Southern. Cool. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, in terms of that, I, mean, I love the, the crock pot idea, you know, the old hot pot idea. I don't like those old hot pot, hot pots <laughs> for a little bit, but the crock pot's really kind of a uh -huh. neat to see uh -huh. uh, that, that that's making its resurgence. I might have a few of those for you. You're okay. talking uh, to me. They're older, but, but they're, they're older, but it. you know, but yeah. Um, so, in terms of some of that, um, do you um, just, you know, is there any kind of like an intake or anything? Do we find out whether or not we're going to fix the problem? Are we just um, stopping the gap? What are we doing? Yeah. What are, what's happening here? It's with food insecurity, it's hard. And so, yeah. the, and with food pantries, they really consider it in an emergency situation. But what we really feel like is by, and they've seen this in research in K through 12 schools, that if you can provide children with food, they're going to do better academically. Right. They can excel. They can't focus. They can't do well in the classroom without it. So really our mission and our motto is to eat or to feed, um, to, to feed, um, educate, graduate, and give. And so our goal is to help these, these kids, these students that are at Missouri Southern during this approximately four year time period, get the food they need, get during difficult times um, so that they can um, learn and they can excel in the classroom and they can graduate. Um, college is uh, somewhat an unusual time period. Students, sure. um, they, uh, so many of our students at Missouri Southern are working maybe full time. A lot of them have families. They're trying to go to school full time and they just need that extra help. And just a little they, bump. Yeah, yep. just a little bump. And it may be once, it may be twice, it may be more regular. We do have social work interns working in the co-op so that they can, um, if they do have more of a chronic need and more need more long-term services and, and even services with housing or other things, if we can connect them with SNAP or WIC. And so we're wanting to be a resource as well as just an emergency um, spot for food. Yeah, I was assuming that you would somewhere get the social work department involved yeah. in there somewhere. <laughs> I mean, really, truly. Yeah. Uh, because again, sometimes those needs are chronic and, mm -hmm. um, you know, and sometimes it's just a, uh, somebody got sick and missed two days of work and mm -hmm. suddenly their paycheck isn't gonna be as much. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I'm just, you know, I found out uh, that, that, that there are so many people in our region and our area that, that are living, you know, from paycheck to paycheck, and all mm -hmm. it takes is one little thing to get them off the, the track that makes them struggle mm -hmm. for, you know, a long period of time afterward. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that stress of not knowing where your next meal comes from, really can take over your mind and can cause so much stress that it 
really makes it challenging for students to do the work that they need in the classroom and to succeed in the classroom because they're so worried about um, money and it may cause them to work more and if they're working more they're they're giving less time and attention to, to their, their studies yeah and again I mean it's a, it's kind of a how do we say this is kind of a selfish interest but in Missouri Southern we want our students to succeed right. if we're gonna hand them a degree right. we want to make sure that they know what they're doing when they walk out the door mm -hmm. I mean you know right, right. and and if they can't study because of all of whatever the mm -hmm. situations are mm -hmm. it's gonna make it very difficult for them to succeed mm -hmm. and to learn the way that they need to so that mm -hmm. they're gonna be able to take those uh, positions of leadership in our community mm -hmm. wherever it happens to be whatever they're you know whatever they're learning right you know right. Uh, yeah interesting mm -hmm. so have we had any uh, has there been any um, trends I mean I know it's new so I mean probably haven't had a chance to even study your statistics yet or anything right well it is and we started in November and then we um, students were off campus for about four to five weeks for a winter break and we stayed open and we really saw that we have a survey that they complete an anonymous survey um, when they leave just to get an idea about if we're meeting their needs is our inventory meet your needs do our hours meet your needs are your on campus off campus that type of thing and most of the students that came in over winter break were on campus without a personal vehicle so they really did not have a lot of access to food during that time period when the cafeteria was closed and Interesting. so they yeah. really used our our the co-op as a way to do that um, so yeah, and that's and that was probably a demographic that you weren't even thinking about right. when you opened up, were you? Because mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't. I mean, you know, I was just kind of like, and I've done higher ed for you know mm -hmm. twenty five years now, and I'm like, I didn't quite think about that niche. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But you know, with the campuses kind of out there on the mm -hmm. you know the kind of the edge of town, and and those that are there without any uh, you know without any uh, you know transportation or whatever, which would be some of our students. Uh, mm -hmm. It's very interesting. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So they've got, they may be on with the scholarship or what they can pay for, but the residence halls mm -hmm. and the, the, the uh, food service areas are not open right. uh, during that break. Mm -hmm. So again, you know, where are they going to eat and how are they going to mm -hmm. get there and some of those things. Mm -hmm. And we think with during um, times of the school year, we will have a diver more diverse population coming sure. in. Um, and we're hoping to expand our hours and do maybe a late afternoon, early evening, so that staff that after work, if they do need to come in, they could. Those with, at the Lion Cub Academy, those families could come in after picking up their children if they needed to. So we are hoping to expand some of those services to the community um, for those that are working and aren't off work until, um, the evening hours. Yeah. Well, um, my guest this morning is Dr. Andrea Culler, who is uh, a faculty member at uh, Missouri Southern in the kinesiology department. But uh, through her knowledge of her students and a couple of other faculty members, uh, founded the Lion Co-op, uh, which is kind of like a, you know, kind of like a, a food pantry, if you will, uh, on the campus to deal with our students who, uh, our faculty or staff, who are some for whatever reason uh, experiencing some difficulties uh, eating nutritionally and keeping themselves uh, going. So uh, we're going to be right back after a quick break. Uh, don't go away. And we're going to continue talking a little bit about uh, our students at Southern. Uh, you know, a lot of times we just don't stop to think about the fact that they've got some of the same issues that hit the larger community. So we're going to be right back after this quick break. Don't go away. You're watching Faith in Our Hometown on KSN-TV, brought to you as a community service of Mercy Hospital Joplin. Well, again, thanks for sticking with us on this Sunday morning. Uh, I hope it's going well for you. We're talking with uh, Dr. Andrea Culler, Cullers, uh, who is a uh, professor at Missouri Southern, uh, one of the founders of the Lion Co-op. So uh, you've got this service where if a member of the Missouri Southern community, if a lion, if you will, mm -hmm. uh, comes in and is having trouble putting food on the table or figuring out where their next meal is coming from for whatever reason, uh, you guys can help stop that gap. Mm -hmm. But so, so where do we get all this food? Well, it's been pretty amazing. So in, I guess in October, we kind of started a campus food drive. So with, it's, um, oh, I'm trying to think of their name. It's a social work club of students and they put boxes out around campus and we just really had a, a huge food drive that went on. And so that was how we initially stopped 
the pantry. Um, since then, we have continued getting donations from, we have permanent donation spots located on campus, and then just the community has been bringing in food. Um, mm -hmm. The Seroptim Seroptimus International That's and hard Joplin, to say, isn't it? Yes, it is. <laughs> They, um, just last week, they came in with like five boxes of food. And yeah. um, so just, it's amazing. Um, community members are just bringing in food. Um, a, a lion backer with Joplin, John Tupper, he has donated two deep freezes and now we need to fill them up um, with food. But just different groups in the community, different individuals have really um, taken it upon themselves to, to donate. So the staff and faculty at Missouri Southern have been amazing as well. And then the foundation at Missouri Southern, they did a crowdfunding campaign in the fall as well. So we were able to raise money so we could um, buy the crock pots um, for kids that we can, when we find out or when we see certain things that are needed, we can go out and purchase them. Um, we also have a relationship with Crossline, so we good. can good, good. Um, get supplies or get things from them. A lot of times they get too much of something right. and they can pass it on to us. Um, also, we care, which is located out by the 71 bypass or I-49 bypass, um, they have been in contact with us. And now that we have freezers, they get a lot of frozen food. Um, they can pass on some of their right. surplus as well. So Well, and I do know that the, uh, that the, that the pantries in the area are good about sharing with each mm -hmm. other when they wind up with an excess of something. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that we can, you know, uh, pass those things along as there are no restrictions uh, by the donors mm -hmm. who give mm -hmm. them to us. Uh, but we can then, you know, pass mm -hmm. some of those things along. Um, and, I, and I know that all of the, the pantries, uh, because again, for example, okay, so at St. Peter, Peter's, we have the ability to feed folks. Mm -hmm. So if they're hungry on, you know, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, they can come for lunch mm -hmm. and do those things. But if you're in class and you've got class at 11, you've got class at mm -hmm. one, and again, uh, trouble with transportation where you can't get over to be fed, mm -hmm. uh, or you've got a couple little mouths at home to feed right, in right. addition, that makes it a little bit difficult to come over there and to do that. I mean, mm -hmm. so we're all in the larger community mm -hmm. in this larger Joplin area, mm -hmm. trying to figure out ways of making sure that mm -hmm. uh, our folks don't fall through the cracks. Right. And so you guys have found a very innovative way of trying to make sure mm -hmm. we do that with the, with the campus community, mm -hmm. which I think is wonderful. We, and we do, we have like a list of all of the resources in Joplin. So when Cross Signs is open, when you all do feet, when you all have meals, when Watered Gardens has their meals. So whenever there's a meal or a pantry open, we have that list of resources. So those that need more than we can give or that live in the greater Joplin area, and or if they wander in and we can't serve them, if they're not a member of the Lion community, they know then we can go. still go. So yeah, and again, I know them. that um, it's easy for us to talk about Joplin because Missouri Southern's right here, but I mean, that, that also goes for the larger community. You know, mm -hmm. Carthage has got opportunities. Uh, you know, the, the different, the different, you know, Pittsburgh, uh, we've mm -hmm. got, because, uh, you know, we do have a lot of, we have students from Pittsburgh even mm -hmm. coming to Missouri Southern. <laughs> That's a shocking thing. But, but, I mean, we do have some of those things going on, mm -hmm. and we have those opportunities to, uh, you know, just reach them on campus where it might be more difficult for them to do that mm -hmm. with, a, with a different agency or some of those mm -hmm. kinds of things. So I'm just really glad that we're doing that. If somebody wants to help, how would they do that? I mean, well, how would they They can take either, care? Um, mm -hmm. in Hearns Hall and Billingsley, kind of two main billing, buildings on campus, there are just kind of permanent collection bins. They can drop food off at any time. Um, we have, we're always open Monday, two to four, and two, Thursday, 10 to 12, and people can just drop off food at that time. Um, they can always call the Missouri, Found Missouri Southern Foundation if they're interested in donating um, either um, food items or cash. Um, we accept either and enjoy <laughs> both. It is a total, it is an equal opportunity yes, acceptor. Equal, yes, and we, we are totally run by donations. The, the university gave us the location, right. but other than that, we are self-supported. So yeah. we um, don't receive money from anyone other than us raising yeah. it in donations. So, so anybody that's worried about tax <laughs> dollars and all those kinds of things, I mean, you know, I, again, I mean, you know, there mm -hmm. are responsibilities. Mm -hmm. We can't, I mean, you know, at a, at, a, at, a, at a state institution like Missouri, you know, Southern, we mm -hmm. can't necessarily divert money from you know, this right. place to another place unless it's been in the budget and approved mm -hmm. and all those mm -hmm. things. So this is a, this is kind of like a volunteer and, uh, you know, just kind of like a little brainstorm that kind mm -hmm. of um, learned yes. how to solve itself uh -huh. within that context. Yeah. yeah. 
So, um, we, you know, I don't know whether or not all of our viewers have ever stopped to think about this, but Missouri Southern really has a very different um, student population than uh, a lot of the rest of the campuses in the state. Mm -hmm. And I've always laughed because, I mean, we've also got a different population, you know, like even in terms of Catholics, I always laugh. Mm -hmm. I mean, Missouri Southern is the only state campus that only, we've only got, we, we match, the, the amount of Catholics on campus match the amount of Catholics in the area, which is about 4%, <laughs> which means we've only got about 250 Catholics on campus. But, um, you know, uh, it, my other universities where, you know, I've worked or been associated with, again, more traditional students, and at mm -hmm. Southern, that's not the case. So can you talk a little bit about the makeup of the student body? We've, we've never talked about that here right. on uh, the show. And it is, it is different, um, it, and I, I think Southern really started as a commuter school, and um, it it's, is getting away from that now. We're having more and more students living on campus, um, but a large amount of our population is called um, like first generation, so they may be the first person in their family to be going to college. Um, they, may, they may be from a lower socioeconomic status. Most of our students at Southern um, are eligible for financial aid, um, federal financial aid, so meeting those lower income standards. So they, they have challenges. I know right. just from teaching, I would say, maybe the majority of my students um, work close to full time, go to school full time. And so it's it's challenging, and so so I they're really pulling down two full time positions, yeah. if you will. I, I mean, don't at least know. in the way that we we traditionally think about things. Yeah. And in my online classes, they're also um, I have a lot of pre nursing students and their mothers as well. And I'm like, how are you a mom and working and going to school? Um, that would just be really really challenging. I have been absolutely amazed at some of the students I've met and what they are able to juggle. It is amazing. Mm -hmm. But yeah. again, that's also part of the reason why we have some of this food insecurity that we were talking about earlier is because they are juggling so much that if they're in school full time, you know, can they pick up the extra shift? Mm -hmm. Well, not if they're going to do themselves harm academically, and you know, and, how, and so, and they're really in school for the degrees so that they can mm -hmm. improve their lot in life and the lot of their family, mm -hmm. and so it's it really is such an interesting balancing mm -hmm. act, mm -hmm. and all it takes is an illness or something to just knock, you know, send somebody reeling for you know a little bit, and so how do we mm -hmm. how do we step in and help them to fix some of that? And again. We're not looking to make anybody dependent, uh, you know, on on a little bit of assistance. But if the a little bit of assistance can help to make, make the difference, yeah, to, exactly. Uh, provide them with that <clears throat> education to give them that little bit of extra in the classroom that they might need um, to give them that sense of security. And I think what's what we have seen is that the students feel like we care. Somebody at Missouri Southern cares because they are making the effort to make sure I'm not hungry, to make sure I can go to class with a meal, to make sure I have what I need to be successful. And sometimes people have never had that or they don't get it very often. And to know that there are lions, that there's this lion community that's taking care of each other and supporting each other, I think means so much to the students. Um, and, and to everyone. I think it's just this community involvement um, that's really been what has touched my heart so much. Well, and I will just tell you that, I mean, I've been here probably about twice as long as you have now. So I've been, I'm in my, I'm past my 12 year mark and mm -hmm. now I'm into year 13. So uh, what I, one of the things I love about our hometown, and I mean that in the larger, in the larger mm -hmm. base, whether we're talking about Carthage or Webb City or Carl Junction or, you know, wherever we happen to be talking about, there really is a strong sense of, of, of trying to look out for each other. Mm -hmm. And I love that about, and I love that it extends to the university. Mm -hmm. You know, many times people make the university out to be this cold, you know, impersonal place, you know, that's all business. And, and, and again, it's just filled with other human beings and they're filled with the human beings from our region. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I love the fact that we've got a caring community at Southern. Uh, I've always found that to be the case in my 13 years of being associated with the university. Mm -hmm. and. Um, I love the fact that they care, and so I love it when they've had a, a you know a moment like this where you know the need came to the forefront, and somebody just said, "Well, what could we do here?" Um, again, not that we couldn't get those folks connected out in the larger community, but it's still kind of good to stretch the uh, the academics' heart, uh, you know, to to say, "Well, how do we take care of some of these folks that are here in our area?" So um, again. 
If folks want to be involved, they can donate food, they can donate a cash, uh, they can be in touch through the foundation. They can oh. donate time. They donate, yeah, there you go. <laughs> you got we're, yeah, volunteers. And one other unique aspect of the pantry is um, we're trying to make it, or we want to create it uh, as an innovative classroom. So getting students involved. And so this semester I have a communications practicum class coming in and looking at PR and marketing and how they can be a part of the co-op. Um, I have a, an art class, an art practicum that's looking at nonprofit design and they're going to come it. to the co-op. And so we're trying to get students involved to both learn things, have it be a learning experience, getting students involved in um, projects with the co-op. I have a student um, looking at athletics and athletes and food insecurity and we are hopefully going to Maine um, for the University Global Food Insecurity Conference in the spring so lots of exciting things not just it is about feeding people but it's also about furthering the education sure. of students on campus and that my friend is the beauty of being a spot of higher ed which I love so we're gonna be right back after this mercy minute don't go away stick around for our wrap-up the dreaded tagged photo I married the love of my life in October, and when I got home that night, I saw this. Frankly, this is every obese person's worst nightmare. You have no control, none, over what other people post. And up until that day, I'd been very careful about how I presented myself on social media. In fact, I generally only posted photos like this. What's sad is that I haven't always been like this. Confession, I've been a yo-yo dieter for roughly 10 years. When I met this amazing guy three years ago, he didn't care how much I weighed, but he did care about my health. A month after our wedding, I talked to my doctor and my journey began. Here's an honest and usually pretty entertaining look at how I got to bariatric surgery and beyond. Buckle up, check out my blog, Confessions of a Yo-Yo Dieter. Well, again, there's a there's an interesting uh, you know mercy minute for our nutritionist uh, with us today, <laughs> but uh, my guest this morning has been Dr. Andrea Cullors, uh, who's in the kinesiology department. We've been talking a little bit about food insecurity and the way the Missouri Southern community has tried to uh, assist that with the university community. So our fa our students, our faculty, and our staff, anybody who might be experiencing a little bit of a bump, the university community came together as a group that cares uh, to try to make sure that we could help in the short term. Uh, and help sometimes guide people who might be even in the longer term for how to make sure that uh, they're fed well enough so that they can continue the important business of being in school and learning and doing all of those things. Again, it's great to be a member of the Missouri Southern community. Um, I'm very proud to have been associated with the university for the last 13 years now. And this is just one way that our university community is trying to make a difference in the lives of the students who go there. Um, we thank you for joining us this week for Faith in Our Hometown. Uh, we hope that you will continue to keep us in your Sunday morning viewing plans. God bless. Have a great Sunday. Thanks for watching. Faith in Our Hometown can be seen Sunday mornings at 6.30 and 9 a.m. on KSN. Brought to you as a community service and sponsored by Mercy Hospital Joplin.